Sometimes he goes, I went through my sadness. I went through all the sadness that is really happening in the world. Right now, that women has to deal with, with their child. It was really, really, <laughs> and really deep. Hello, gorgeous people. How are you? Well, I'm just back from my ayahuasca retreat this weekend, and wow, what a beautiful time. I'll tell you all about it, and we're going to hear some testimonials on the other side. So I don't want to take up too much time talking about the experience because we're going to listen to some people who are going to talk about their experience. However, I wanted to say one thing that really stood out. When we were doing the, the intention round, this is just before you go into the, the experience, the shaman said, I want you to talk about what your intention is, but also about the person that you would most like to talk to in that experience, okay? And what surprised me the most was that probably half of the group said that they would like to talk to Jesus. And I was, I was thinking, holy cow, because remember that, that I, uh, the people who go to the ayahuasca retreats are not all uh, super religious, they're, they're spiritual, but not all of them are spiritual. Some people are very, very, very sort of grounded in just the day to day. And yet, this was the first time that I ever heard that. Like half of the people saying, I want to spend time with Jesus. And some people said they want to spend time with God. What's that about? Well, it's this shift that I'm seeing, this shift that I'm feeling, which is that people want something more than what this horrible, stinky, piss poor world has got to offer us at the moment. It isn't the world, it's the society that has been generated by all of that badness. So, Anyway, the, the, the event happened in Avila in, in Spain. Beautiful place, absolutely beautiful. I know some of you have seen it before, but I'll put some images on and stuff like that so you can see, okay? I love you all, and now you're gonna have a listen to some of these testimonials. Well, my name is Oscar. I'm from Barcelona, but I live, uh, I've been living for a year and a half in Salamanca. Mm -hmm. And this is my second time that I do ayahuasca with Manuel. Mm -hmm. I did a ceremony about 17 years ago with Yahé, mm -hmm. somewhere else. But it was a bit frustrating. I think at the time I wasn't really prepared or I had too many expectations, as we said today. And uh, I didn't enjoy it that much mm -hmm. that time. But for whatever reason, there was a time in my life uh, about six months ago where I felt that well, about a year ago, where I felt that I needed to go back to the medicine. So I got in touch with some people, asking if they knew somebody like nearby where I live now in Salamanca, that they do the ayahuasca thing, that they're serious about it and that they are trustworthy. So uh, they told me that, ayahuasca, um, that Manuel was doing a, a very good job with ayahuasca, very good job integrating the ceremony. And so I felt confident enough and I said, look, I think this is what I need to do at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I came. And, uh, well, it was a, an amazing experience at the time. It was life-changing. When mm. I really understood when they say it is life-changing, it really is life-changing. So here we are with Raquel. <laughs> Good morning, Raquel. How are you? <laughs> Good. I am uh, feel like I'm in a cloud, kind of. But, yeah, I'm... I don't know, I feel a lot of things, so it's kind of hard to say. Sure. But all good things. This is this is the first time that you've experienced ayahuasca, yes? Yes, yeah, so this is my first time. Okay, so and you've had two ceremonies, yeah? Mm -hmm. What was the first one like for you? The first one, before I came into it, I was very nervous because, you know, you hear a lot of experiences, but I was really trying to, you know, just come into it with an open mind and have no expectations and I had an amazing experience I didn't have w w a single bad moment mm 
Mm. And that was surprising to me because I thought I was going to go through things and struggle and this, but I really just saw so much goodness and I oft I don't really see that in my day-to-day -day life. I forget to see the good and really just showed me to that to like open my eyes to the present and embrace the now. So, we're here with Louise. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Um, so, would you like to just introduce yourself? Why are you here and where you come from? Yeah, so I'm Louise, I'm from France. Uh, I live in Madrid and I started, I had my first uh, ayahuasca ceremony in August. In August? In August ah, yes. So not, not much time. Not much time, but, but many things <laughs> since August. A lot okay. of things. So what's, what has your experience been like with ayahuasca? Well, my experience has been strong and intense. Uh, it was basically, uh, for me, the, um, yeah, the first, um, first moment of a succession of many events that happened uh, since August. Um, and it all started with ayahuasca, basically. Uh, I was turning 30, I had a lot of, you know, uh, stress, uh, anxiety, and feeling that, okay, there, there is something, uh, okay, that I need to change. And it started, um, yeah, unlocking a lot of things, uh, uh, putting me in a lot of spiritual, uh, spiritual things. Okay. And uh, how many ceremonies have you been on now since August? Uh, 20. 20? 20. Yes, twenty. So, and basically, very packed between November and December. Uh, I went to Peru two weeks, and um, so yeah, that was a lot. Um, until uh, December, my last ceremony with Manuel here uh, was amazing. Was beautiful. Was the best moment of my life until until then. Uh, but also I felt that, okay, physically that was too much in, in too, too, too little time. Yeah. So, uh, so I have, uh, this is my, my first retreat since, since then, so in three months. I've done uh, other things since. But, and I also, I believe that my work with Ayaska is basically uh, over. So, okay. ceremony today. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I know it's going to be powerful. And I think maybe, uh, I don't know, every uh, four, five, six months, maybe uh, go back with a ceremony to, with a plant to, to, to keep, you know, unlocking, unlocking uh, some of other things. But in terms of healing, I think I'm, I'm good. <laughs> so we're here with Ilaria. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing this interview, Ilaria. So we've had one uh, ceremony. Yeah. And how was that ceremony for you? Um, it was uh, it was my first ceremony after giving birth. Mm -hmm. I came to some ceremony while I was pregnant, but I didn't feel comfortable drinking the medicine. So it was uh, two years without doing ceremonies and living this part of my life. That was a big part of my life before before my pregnancy. And it's strange because the plant uh, made me feel right away very calm and very centered, enjoying the meditation really a lot, which sometimes, you know, during the meditation you are very all over the place. Mm -hmm. And right away I was uh, really, really mareada, having I usually see butterflies, colibri, and uh, patterns, mm -hmm. very light color, white. So it was, I was right away with very mareada. And dizzy, yeah? Dizzy, but in a good way. I wanted to sing my mantras, and I wanted to, to call Tara, which is, a, which is the great mother. Mm -hmm. And I was really connected. The voice came back after so long. Um, and it was really, really channeled. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't... It was just um, there. Now I understand it's not, it's not 
the ayahuasca that it's life changing. It's you that you change your life. But mm. definitely, ayahuasca points out exactly what you need to change in your life. No, mm. and 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 it did so. My how, life how's changed. It changed? How's it changed your life? Yeah, uh, it changed a lot my relation with certain people, certain relations that are very important, like with my mother, with my grandmother, with my ex-girlfriend. There was lots of grief, lots of uh, anger, mm -hmm. resentment, and it healed up. I understood so much about myself, about how do I, how my relations are. Not, it didn't make me feel that I'm bad or a bad person at all. It made me feel like I'm a good person, but I'm, um, the way that I am, it makes me be like, I have relations the way that I had them. So I used to feel a lot of like a, like a victim sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like a victim anymore. I feel, I feel happy, I feel fulfilled. I feel, I feel that it changed me dramatically as well, my character, more mm -hmm. patient. I feel that I have like an, you know, I feel like ayahuasca keeps in me, so in my everyday life everything I do sometimes if I start getting angry frustrated soon enough I, I feel like the ayahuasca says hey just relax it's sure. okay and sure. I feel like if it's inside of me constantly sure. so for me it's been like an amazing tool that I think everyone should have everyone mm -hmm. that is sensitive enough and that wants to have the experience should definitely do it because it really it really it's really helpful Quite often, ayahuasca kind of gives you these messages, you know, personalized, personalized messages. Yeah. Have you received anything this weekend? Yes, <laughs> so many. <laughs> um, well, I, I was, um, I don't know, the first ceremony, I was getting so many, you know, downloads and messages, and um, I was sharing them a lot with you. But a really big one. Um, that I felt, I, I just felt like I was um, the, you know, ayahuasca made me see that I am the solution to my problems and I am ayahuasca, like I am the plant, I, I, you know, like the answers were all in, right there in front of me and, um, and that I'm powerful and that I can, you know, you know, like ayahuasca just brings out the things that you already have inside. So sure. I just felt so expansive and creative and I just wanted to do so many things and so many ideas were popping in my head and I was like, ah, oh, so, so much things. I mean, I don't even know where to start. So Excellent. Um, you know, what attracted me is when someone told me that, okay, this will save you years of therapy. Uh, I'm a lazy, <laughs> no, I'm not lazy, <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, it does a great work for you. <laughs> so, sure. So that uh, what sure. I like. Lots of people uh, talk about ayahuasca. One night with the plant medicine is like a year's worth of therapy. Uh, how do you feel totally. about that? But more, more, much more. <laughs> I, I don't know much therapy actually. Uh, now I, I know many spiritual therapy. I don't know like the, the regular one. See, I, I tried like a few years ago, it didn't help me, it was, it was very mental, it was like too theor theoretical. Mm -hmm. My first uh, ceremony uh, with Ayahuasca was unlocking emotional, uh, you know, emotional unblocking from my, my father's death, the thing that I hadn't cried uh, years ago, that was just a release, it was very soft. Because you know, back then I, I couldn't handle a very strong ceremony, of course, first one, so very, very smooth, uh, very smooth uh, emotional release that unlocked other things. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Just for clarity, you sing during the ceremony, yeah? you sing with Manuel. Yeah. Manuel yeah. Uh, and talked me into singing into ceremonies. Absolutely, yeah, well I'm pleased you did. And, and you sing very beautifully, you've got a very beautiful voice. How long have you been singing? I was a professional singer, ah, okay. but um, I had a big setback in my career and um, I didn't want to do music anymore and, um, 
and I was in my Antuya Haku. <laughs> And uh, I was already a year going through a process of cleaning and healing. Uh, my career um, handed in a weird way, mm -hmm. and it gave me some depression. Okay. Uh, I came to Peru after many life <laughs> sliding doors, and uh, we were locked in my Antuyaku for COVID. And I was singing in my tambo with my little guitar for myself, and we were five. And some people had been dieting for a long, long time. They lost their voices. So Manuel said, really, we need, we need you to sing because we need energy to go through this moment. And mm -hmm. we need some feminine en energy also. I will teach you some. And I said, I don't know what to sing. <laughs> he said, I will teach you some song, and you sing. You said that um, you think about ayahuasca every day. Yes. Yeah. I felt such a profound love, a feeling of profound, pure love, that it that really changed my life. That 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 feeling. So ever since, every day I think about that love. Every day, before I go to sleep, I try and listen to the music of Manuel, mm -hmm. and that just takes me there as well and every time I see my daughter and I hug her or, or with people that I love I, I just feel connected to that love mm -hmm. and so that love is so big and so pure that you just don't want to let, let it down mm -hmm. so that's why I say that I have this inner voice that every time that I have like any bad feeling anger or, or, or envy or whatever it makes me like hey just just go back to the path where you feel that love again. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like not during the whole day. It's, it's just I feel it inside of me all day long. So this is your first time. Do you think that you'll repeat? That's interesting. I think with these kinds of things, I always want to like, oh, I want to do it again, and I want to. It was so amazing, but like I really want to learn from this experience and. Um, incorporate it in my day-to-day -day life so and you know because I think I am capable of you know uh, being feeling this way but I am I think I am open it open to doing it again but I want to do it from not from a place of oh I, I, I need this and hmm. I want to do it um, to you know enhance um, certain things and I don't know I was thinking you know, maybe my, I feel like my family would really benefit from this. <laughs> like, I would want to do it again for them and be a, a guide for them. Because I okay. felt very in control and very, well, normal. I felt normal, actually. Like, I don't know. I feel very normal. So, where do you think this ayahuasca journey, because you've been on an intense 20 ceremonies a journey in a very short time, where do you think it's going to take you? I think I'm still in the transition phase. It already took me where I want to be because uh, now uh, the one I want to be I'm usually part of ayahuasca, but other things that I did since since August, basically to be I think on my life life path uh, connected with spirituality, discovering a lot of lot of things about myself, and um, so yeah, I think it heal you. I mean, everything is, is about healing. I mean, it's never stopped healing. So, when I believe you are kind of healed, so you are on, you're on your life path, so everything is good. Mm -hmm. It's very confused right now in our society what it means to be strong. I come from a male family, <laughs> um, and I have a very strong mom, which is a great woman, but she's also, we carry a lot of androgen mm -hmm. energy also but also like uh, a very strong feminine energy that has to be discovered and yeah so for example in this ceremony it made me after having a great time I had this very strong variation that wouldn't go down it was really long and my body is somehow also tired from mm -hmm. being a mother giving birth 
so at a certain point I was like, am I going to be able to handle it? Because I don't know. And so it taught me the strength that women have, but also that it's a different strength from manhood. Mm -hmm. And it taught me that, um, it showed me, you know, it taught me, I don't know if I learned, but it showed me that I have to be more, um, I don't know this word, uh, there is a more elegant or um, neat way to um, sus uh, sustain, um, sustain, um, effort mm -hmm. and that's a more feminine way to, to handle things and and then yes it goes I went through my sadness I went through all the sadness that is really happening in the world right now that women has to deal with with their child it was really, really, <laughs> and really deep, and then, and then there is always, um, to me, ayahuasca always ends with a lighter note, with laughing, because ultimately we need to learn how to laugh, too. So it was really a, a journey <laughs> where I, ex uh, I went through everything. <laughs> was a roller coaster. Mm. How do you see your, your journey going forward with ayahuasca? Do you think it'll be something that you'll do frequently? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I want to do this like a couple of times a year or... Mm. It depends as well on the money because uh, at course. the end of the day it, it's not so, it's something that is super cheap. So I decided doing it uh, every six months now. Mm -hmm. But I don't... Yeah, maybe I start doing it more often if I have more money. Maybe I do it more often. It just all depends. But definitely, for me, it's kind of like a, a therapy. Uh, it brings me to a neutral point where I feel connected again. Mm -hmm. And I see that every time, like this time again, it's been different. Because it's brought me, like, this pure love again. It, it allowed me to feel that pure love again, which I'm so grateful. But it also, like, took me, like, hey, but this is there's the other side, like the darkest, that, that, that you can really suffer, like mm -hmm. in the other ceremonies, I, I didn't suffer at all, it was all love and happiness and connection and, and joy, this time it's been the same, but also it showed me like hey, you can go deep down and, and, and suffer, but it's still beautiful, mm -hmm. because then you will appreciate more the other thing. And the beautiful one, and then I returned to the room, I returned to the music, and uh, I return to laughing, and then there is no there. <laughs> yeah, beautiful song. Beautiful song. Mm -hmm. And uh, Major Tom mm -hmm. and the radio. Uh, it was really nice, mm -hmm. but intense. Intense. 